Judge Katanji Brown Jackson is reshaping history for black women in America and black women all around the world. This is the next step towards a more inclusive, equality-driven America. Reporting from the White House, this is Sarah Jones Smith. The Kansas Jayhawks beat the North Carolina Tar Heels, making them your 2022 March Madness champions. This is the end of the NCAA men's basketball season. Signing off from New Orleans, this is Sarah Jones Smith with News Vision. The National Football League is using eSports to connect with HBCU students. 15 students who participated in the second ever Madden NFL tournament were given the opportunity to fly to Los Angeles during Super Bowl week. One of those attendees was Eric Miner from Claflin University. Not only was it Miner's second time participating, it was his second time winning. Uh, winning the tournament for the second time, uh, I mean, it just means like I'm kind of like making history, like be like the kind of like the, like the start of the HBCU Madden tournament, you know, and th this year, especially with like, you know, uh, get us to, getting us to the Super Bowl and like meeting the NFL executives, going to the studio, meet some celebrities, some famous players. Although the students got this opportunity through the HBCU Madden tournament, their experience went far beyond gaming, allowing them to connect with NFL leaders. Throughout the week, the students were given a tour of the NFL office in Inglewood, attended the NFL honors, and watched as the Rams took home the Lombardi Trophy. Howard University junior Malik C plans to use each of those experiences to his advantage. Uh, be in the room and have those conversations of how I can make this opportunity and expand on and make it better to be able to keep those healthy relationships. And, I don't know, maybe find my way to working in the NFL someday. Using the tournament, the NFL hopes to expand diversity and inspire HBCU students to get involved and represent their schools. Reporting from Los Angeles, I'm Sarah Jones Smith with Howard University News Vision. The Biden-Harris administration announced the Project School Emergency Response to Violence Program, also known as the SERVE program. Vice President Kamala Harris announced the measures during an event at the White House on March 16th. That HBCUs that receive threats that significantly disrupt the learning environment are eligible for grant funding through our Department of Education and the leadership of Secretary Cardona. The funds from the project will be allocated to enhancing campus security and providing mental health resources. President of Howard University's Student Association, Kylie Burke, feels an increase in mental health resources will be beneficial campus-wide. We're going to be able to potentially increase the amount of faculty and staff we have working in the Counseling Center and providing mental health resources. And I think as overwhelmed and stressed out as students are, it's important to recognize that when you have one, two, three caseworkers working with uh, multiple students, they can be overwhelmed as well. The White House also has an initiative on advancing educational equity, excellence, and economic opportunity through HBCUs. Its work is focused on policy, projects, and programs highlighting historically Black campuses. Senior advisor to President Biden, Cedric Richmond, recognizes the importance in investing in these institutions. Well, we want them to do great with more money, and we think that the impact is just phenomenal. If you look at teachers, if you look at doctors, you look at lawyers, they come from HBCUs and we need to um, we need to empower them. Through this initiative, Biden and Harris hope to use government-wide policy making to break down barriers that HBCUs face. If successful, HBCU students should see an increase in the quality of their education. Reporting from the White House, this is Sarah Jones Smith with News Vision. I have proven that you could treat racial inequality as an investigative beat. Highly esteemed author, investigative journalist, and professor Nicole Hannah Jones participated in a book reception and discussion on Howard University's campus. Attendees even received a free copy of Hannah Jones's book, The 1619 Project, A New Origin Story. Howard's newest professor hopes that through her teaching, she'll be able to be an example for journalism students, showing them how impactful their work can be. So what I hope is that students will um, gain an understanding of the type of big journalism that you can do and that it's okay to do journalism that centers the black experience. And I just hope that uh, it proves to be inspirational for them. Hannah Jones gave attendees more insight about the feedback the 1619 Project has received since 2019. For students like Naima Miller, Hannah Jones's response to that feedback was noteworthy. I think the most inspiring part of tonight was definitely uh, hearing her talk about how she has responded to both negative and positive feedback from her project, as well as her critique, critics and the legislation that has been like 
going around throughout the South um, trying to ban uh, race relations in school and talking about that. Sometimes I wonder what my life could have been. And this was um, Elmore's daughter. Senior Deontay Makai Washington had the opportunity to facilitate the conversation with Hannah Jones, asking questions about the project, its meaning, and its popularity. I think that it was it's an amazing opportunity, of course, like I, I get to talk to someone who literally um, has such a no, like is such a notable figure and is someone who is willing to challenge who challenge basically the world. I mean, even got the former president to talk about her. After accomplishing what she describes as the blackest thing the New York Times has ever done, Nicole Hannah Jones is empowering the black community, Howard University students and our nation as a whole. On the campus of Howard University with News Vision, this is Sarah Jones Smith.